Welcome back to another And Now for Something Horrible, where we talk about all the worst things in nature that you didn't know about. So today I wanted to talk about predator-prey reversals. And this is something that is not super common in nature, but basically uh, it's the inversion of a common predator-prey relationship, where the the generally considered prey species begins to uh, actively feed on the predator species. And this most famously probably occurs uh, with a certain kind of tiger beetle called a pomus. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with tiger beetles, this here is an example of a tiger beetle. This one is a cisindeline. Um, they're, like the name suggests, they're voracious predators. Um, but they're also sometimes called ground beetles uh, because they have these really long, good uh, cursorial legs. They run extremely fast. Um, and they kind of, as at least as the adults, they kind of charge their prey uh, very quickly and then latch on with these enormous jaws. Uh, but as larvae, they are more like ambush predators frequently. Uh, they're not always this colorful, but it's not uncommon to find them as um, various shades of metallic green or blue or orange. Um, they're really fun, but they are really hard to catch just because they move so quick. In fact, they move so fast that their eyes can't process uh, images fast enough with their brain. So they just kind of aim themselves at something and then charge and they go temporarily blind uh, in the charge and they just kind of hope to catch their prey. And then if they miss, they kind of have to circle back and charge again and again and again, um, like some sort of deranged bull. But anyway, uh, there is this uh, spe this uh, genus or subgenus called a pomus. Um, and their larvae in particular are the ones that are most famous for this predator-prey reversal, although the adults do this as well. So this is kind of what the uh, larvae look like. As you can see, even the larvae look like voracious predators. Um, and just to give credit where credit's due, a lot of this photography and research, uh, the photographs that I'm showing here are uh, from Gil Wizen, who I believe works at Tel Aviv University. Um, or did work. He is an entomologist and a photographer. I'm going to link his website because it's really cool. Uh, and he has a lot of really cool photography of this specific group. Um, but basically, these larvae are vicious predators, as you can see with these uh, psychotic mandibles that they have, that they can clearly sink into something. Um, but what they do is they kind of uh, wiggle seductively in order to um, stimulate the prey response in amphibians, which it's, uh, the amphibians are what these beetles hunt. Um, and these are much, much smaller than the prey that they hunt. And I have some videos from Gil Wizen here that I'll show you in a minute, um, or Wizen, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Um, they are much, much smaller, and they, they look like a delectable little snack for uh, these big frogs or salamanders or newts or whatever it is that is uh, looking for a meal. And so they'll kind of wiggle deliciously uh, and trigger that prey response. And when the um, uh, the frog comes in to eat, it'll, you know, lash out its tongue um, to get it. And it will it dodge the tongue and then uh, with those mandibles slap on to that tongue as it comes in and gets pulled back to the frog where it then burrows into its mouth uh, and begins eating it alive. Uh, the adults do something similar, but we'll uh, talk about that in a minute. This is what it looks like uh, once this larva begins to burrow into its prey. So the frog made the mistake of uh, shooting out its tongue at this guy. And you can see the... Uh, what would be a good color here? Probably blue. You can see the uh, the where the tongue is. This guy, the tongue hit him. He dodged it, grabbed hold, uh, got pulled in, and now it's embedded into the soft parts of its mouth. Uh, so the apomus will now begin to feed just voraciously this way, and the frog is kind of helpless. Uh, even if it were to try and swallow this, it would stay attached to the back of its mouth and just begin to burrow into its organs. It's pretty vicious. Uh, and then with the adults, the adults will also do this, although the adults are a little more mobile, um, and they will sometimes lunge at the, uh, at the amphibian itself instead of the other way around. But again, the amphibian tries to eat this sucker, and 
ends up becoming the sucker. And you can see here, it's already killed this guy and he, it's devouring the meat. But I have some videos here. So this is the video of the larva. You can see the larva here. And then this much larger toad uh, is going to start coming in uh, to set up the strike with its tongue. And it is fast. It's very fast. Uh, the larva will dodge the tongue and then begin to attack the frog or the toad. And there. So the, the frog lunged and it was just, it was over as soon as the frog uh, went for it. So the larva is now attached. Five minutes later, it's still burrowing into the toad or the frog or toad's mouth. It, and there's nothing that the, the amphibian can do about it. Uh, it's just absolutely over. It will burrow through this while it's alive and eat its organs. Uh, eventually it will bleed out. So that's the larva. And the adult is just as vicious. So here we have the adult and the frog. Uh, and it, again, will be very, very fast. And it's on. So the frog kind of stepped on him, which this sometimes happens uh, because they're on the ground and amphibian can cross its path. And then the, uh, the, the beetle will lash on or latch on to the leg. And this is how, this is typical behavior here. So the beetle will latch on to the leg usually. And then it will, uh, with its vice-like super sharp mandibles, it'll cut through the muscles and tendons to cripple the, the amphibian. And now once it's crippled, it can't escape the beetle. And so once it's crippled, uh, the beetle can take its time and just uh, devour the frog alive. And yeah, the frog is now, you can see the skin is stripped away on the abdomen. It'll burrow its way in. It's just a matter of time until the frog bleeds out at basically at this point. So it's over. Uh, but these are vicious, vicious uh predators and it's a complete reversal normally it's you know 99.9 percent .9 of cases it's the amphibian eating the insect this is one of the famous cases where uh things have gone topsy-turvy uh and now you know about it so i'll talk to you guys later don't forget to like and subscribe it helps me out a lot